Hi everybody, welcome, thanks for joining me. I love it when you're here for these Facebook Lives because as I um, put out posts earlier this week, I gave you some little um, sneak peeks at what we're gonna start talking about. And we are gonna start talking about hormones. And I'm gonna show you some testing, I'm gonna give you some examples, I'm going to um, tell you about some stories and significant differences that have been made in those people's stories because of the testing that we've done and the recommendations that I've made. So I really appreciate you being here. I always love it when you share the story as well. So tonight, um, I wanted to first actually ask you what you ate for dinner. And there's a bigger reason for this. One, because you're joining me regularly, I want to hold you accountable. I'm really trying to create a lifestyle. It's a discoveryhealthlifestyle.com that I ask you to go and visit, where I write the blogs, where I put the videos, um, because that's where I can give you the most content. But this is all about lifestyle. And I want you to interact with me, right? You get the most out of these videos if you actually interact. Hey, Luda. Um, gluten-free pizza for Luda. Okay, fantastic. Glad to hear that it was gluten-free. We actually did that yesterday. Um, and it's okay. It is, um, you know, is it the best thing we could have eaten? Well, no, but sometimes do you need to just have a pizza that you're not allergic to? For sure. Um, what else? Becky says, hi, good evening. I had white chicken chili. Ooh, Becky, you're so creative. You put out a lot of good things. I had a kale salad with um, pepitas and dried cranberries and a poppy seed um, vinaigrette dressing. It actually was leftovers from, I had that yesterday at lunch and with some fresh strawberries. It was very, very good. And then also some sweet potato fries, actually. Those tasted awesome. And I want you to know that I wanna hold you accountable. Everything I do, the courses that I, I'm launching, so the food course and a hormone course is gonna be coming soon. It's not just about getting tested. It's about getting tested, about knowing what to do, about giving you the resources and helping you to do it. Okay, so it's a whole package deal that I'm creating. And step by step, hey Tony, as we are moving along, talking about hormones, we're gonna talk about one piece of it tonight. And then we're going to talk about another piece next week, and I'm going to write about it. And so I'm going to be bringing you along on this menopausal madness, as well as just about hormones in general. Jackie, coconut curry chicken over quinoa and fresh green beans. Okay, you guys, you're doing fantastic, and I love it. Great job. And you know what else you writing those comments helps to do? It gives somebody else an idea. It gives them something that says, ooh, that looked good. Penny had chicken with garlic sauce. Fantastic. So that person who goes, oh, I don't know what we're going to eat tomorrow, and then you end up eating crappy, well, now you've just inspired some people. You just inspired another woman and her family to eat better because everything you guys have listed is fantastic. So good job. Sometimes, you know, we just need a little boost. We need a little encouragement. and. That's been a theme lately, but I've got a great, great story for you, um, and it's super fun, and I'm going to tie in her hormones because the hormones are the whole reason that she was going a little bit crazy. As my good friend Holly might say, she was full of cray-cray, and she could holler, hardly tolerate herself. This woman is 39 years old. She's like, I'm almost going to be 40 years old, and I feel like I'm going crazy. She works in an office, actually a chiropractic office. She gets adjusted regularly, but there's demanding people. It's a busy place. It's got a lot going on, and um, she actually started by having a thermography because Keep Cool Thermography goes to that office, it's in another town, but she had thermography done and she found out she's got inflammation 
pretty much throughout her body. She had a whole body scan. There was inflammation around her thyroid. She had started on Synthroid um, a year or year and a half prior to this. And she also had generalized inflammation. She's feeling crazy. She describes Hell Week every single month. Right before her period, she goes through Hell Week where she's super angry and then she cries and she cries and she can't control her emotions. She's telling me about this and this poor woman is suffering. She's like, I'm going to be 40 years old and I'm falling apart. But she didn't have to. And so I'm going to jump to the end. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be the squealer here that she is feeling amazing. Okay. So all of this tragedy that she's going through, this feeling, um, just insane, crazy. And then having this hell week where she can't tolerate herself. She can't tolerate anyone around her and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. So, you know, she got advice from a variety of people and she started taking a supplement because she also has anxiety. Like, oh, she gets really worked up. She gets really nervous. She gets some palpitations. She can't sleep. So she's She's turning into this nervous Nelly. She's got nightmare of a period that's getting heavier and heavier every time. She's going crazy. She can't tolerate Hell Week. And, <laughs> and she doesn't know what to do. And she's taking a supplement that she thinks is helping with her anxiety. So I've been taking this supplement. It was recommended to me for what I've got going on. And that really helps with the anxiety. But she's still crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay. It's getting out of control. She's got this other scare now. Okay, my body's really inflamed by the thermography. Okay, what should I do? Well, we needed to get her tested, right? And so we did. I tested her thyroid because one, I wanted to see if she was on the right dose. Was she too high? Was she too low? Was the Synthroid doing her a good job? And we also ruled out if she had any autoimmune disease. She was clear with that. Um, we tested her foods. Foods are always a key component because they're something that you do every single day, right? You guys gave me amazing things that you had to eat tonight. Awesome. Way to go. And she wasn't eating that great. So she needed a tool to start changing the inflammation in her body, to start changing her diet and to help her get out of this cray cray mode. Right? So we tested her foods and then I also tested her hormones. Does anyone want to guess where her hormones are at? Specifically, her estrogen is what I'm looking for from you if you have an idea. Super heavy periods, weak from hell, can't stand herself, completely emotional. She doesn't know what to do. Um, I'm reading through, uh, Kayla's um, message here with tons of ups and downs, food sensitivities, hormone imbalance, Lyme and fatigue, and still don't handle stress very well. Okay, we got to talk about that. Um, venison meatloaf by Crystal. Great. But does anyone have an idea? What do you think was going on with her hormones? Do you have any idea? It's okay if you don't, because that's why we're talking about it. And, um, you know, she was given this supplement to help balance her hormones. And so while I'm waiting for some of you to answer, because I know there's always a delay, um, and I know some of you know this answer, but she was taking this supplement because she was told it was going to balance her hormones. She's going to be 40 years old. She's having all this anxiety. And she thought it was helping her. Estrogen's high. Cortisol high. Samantha, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. High estrogen levels, says Crystal. Perfect. Whoops, I want to share my screen with you and look at this. I tested her hormones through um, the urine. Yep, high estrogen, high estrogen. So has estrogen dominance. She was absolutely estrogen dominant. Samantha, good guess on the low progesterone. I don't have that up on the screen, but she was not low. She was actually had a good solid amount of progesterone but she was extremely high with her estrogen. Her estrone here specifically at 36, top max 26 through the urine. 
her estradiol over five, and even her estriol at the top end of normal. She had a ton of estrogen. But guess what happens when you're, um, you start going on symptoms? You guys all guessed pretty good, which was great, but you could have guessed wrong. And for different women, Another woman could be feeling that same way and her hormones not be estrogen dominant, her estrogen not be too high. And I'm pointing that out because the supplement she was taking was exactly the wrong thing. It was for hormone balance, but it was contributing to her hormones all getting higher and higher and higher, which is exactly what she didn't need and only contributed to worse anxiety and worse periods. As soon as we got her results, I said, stop that supplement immediately. It's exactly the wrong thing. And so she is a great example of don't just go on symptoms, guys, to support your estrogen or support your progesterone because they might all already be high, you know, instead of assuming that they're low. Hey, Bonnie. Or the problem can happen that sometimes they're wonky. One's high, one's low. And for the next woman with similar symptoms, it's the opposite high and low. So don't guess at it. You have to know where it's at, especially since she thought she was taking the right thing because it felt like it was kind of helping. At least, you know, mentally, she felt like it was helping, but it was really making her worse. It was not the thing that she needed. She didn't need support for her hormones. We needed to clear out her estrogen. And that's exactly what we did. We helped her body clear out excess estrogen. I helped her body methylate and detox that estrogen better to go through the hormone cascade. And somebody um, mentioned it already, but let me, hold on a second. Um, I got to go back to this screen so I can move it. I want to show you another screenshot. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. How about this? Somebody mentioned also about her cortisol. So cortisol is your adrenal gland, right? And um, so Luda, that's not my philosophy. I don't work for the clinic that says that. I just want to make that clear. I work for myself, Discovery Health. But testing is super important. Otherwise, you don't know. Um, but her cortisol pattern, look at it, okay? If I use the cursor here, in her results is the red line, and she's supposed to be in this gray line for both her cortisone and her cortisol, okay? And where is she? She starts out super high when she first wakes up. Oh, my God, she wakes up, and she's already whipping her adrenal gland saying, go, 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 because... She's got a demanding job. She's taken supplements that she's told are going to be helpful. And her hormones are out of whack. And she's got stressor after stressor. So we also needed to work to oh, help this poor woman to chill out. So we needed to interrupt this stress response. Because even when she wakes up in the morning, she's already too high. And then she goes twice if not three times the normal amount, she shoots up. Look at how high this is at a level of 300, where the top level here is about 100, a little bit higher than 100. But look at that right there, 100, high range limit. Look at her patient value up to 300 in her urine for um, her cortisol. Do you wonder why she's feeling a little anxious? She's got a little bit of anxiety and she can't keep it together. And then she's she's crying and she's mad and she's got the hell week because the hell week is when your hormones change right before your period, right? So, oh, oh my goodness. She's doing fantastic. She And I wanted to share her story today because she was so gracious. We've been working together over three months' time, and she told me yesterday that she thanks God for me and that she is so happy that 
someone referred her to start seeing me, she said, literally, you have changed my life. You want to know what I said? I said, no, you changed your life. You changed your food. You started following that. You took my recommendations. I'm here to guide you. But within the first month, she could feel her body starting to chill out. She goes, you know what? Last week was a crazy week at work. And I was sick. I had a cold on top of it. And there were demanding people and people got really upset. And she's like, you know what? I didn't even feel anxious at all. She's like, that was the best feeling ever. She's like, I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm totally feeling like myself. My period is back to normal. She doesn't even have the hell week. So how many women out there do you think you um, have this hell week and it's normal? Hell week's not normal. Feeling all cray cray all the time like you can't stand yourself is not normal. Things are out of whack. And her biggest issues were too high of estrogen, which we helped to clear, and too much stress response, and we needed to break that stress response for her too. Okay, so that's her story, and she did amazing, and she was so gracious and thankful, but really, she did the hard work. I just needed to get her tested, give her the right information, tell her what her testing meant. So I know so many of you want to run out and just get tested. There's a lot of things popping up online where you can just go get tested. I just don't know how accurate that is. And I am a firm believer in you got to know what you're doing. You can't just then start taking supplements to do this or do that to your hormones. You've got to have some education. You've got to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, to get the results like this woman had in three months. She's hardly taking any supplements at all. She's finishing going through a detox right now, and then she won't be taking supplements. She's back to normal. She just needed a little bit of help getting there and somebody who could give her the right direction. Okay, so I know some of you um, want to know more about hormones, so I thought tonight starting with a case study like that would um, be fantastic, but I want to look at your comments. I want to see what you're writing so that I can um, address that specifically. So Kayla, I'm going back to you. I've dealt with a bunch of ups and downs starting with learning about food sensitivities. Yes, Samantha, it was a Dutch or precision analytics. Um, hormone imbalance, limes, and fatigue. I still don't handle stress well and began looking at methylation issues. Um, pyroluria specifically. What do you think of this? So, Kayla, I'm going to have to get back to you because I don't know what that word is. Um, I have to look it up to see exactly what you're talking about um, to give you any feedback on that. So, sorry about that. I went back specifically for to see what you all wrote there, and I'm not sure what you're asking. Joanne's thankful that she's postmenopausal. Yay! Yet, we still got to work on hormones, don't we, Joanne? So even though we stop having a period, which, yes, can be a nightmare, and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier, usually when we're estrogen dominant, not always, not always, but that's what it often suggests. You need to know, do you have progesterone there too, or do you not have progesterone to know what to do? Okay. Um, Crystal, there's your venison meatloaf. Then we've got answers to the high estrogen. You guys are so smart. You got it. Um, hey, Vicki, uh, Samantha, my estriol and estradiol are like zero. Wait a minute, Samantha. You're like 30 years old, aren't you? If that, sorry if I made you old, but you're really young. That's not good. Estriol is really, really weak, but estradiol is dominant. Why? Now you have to ask the question, why? Young woman, Samantha, no estradiol? That's a problem. There's a reason why, and that's why I mentioned that we did foods on this woman too. The foods are a stressor. Stressors screw up your hormones. Your cholesterol, if you lower your cholesterol, if you're not eating well enough and you don't have enough cholesterol, you won't make those hormones either. So you're either abusing your body you're too stressed out, you're using them all up, or you don't even have the components to make them in the first place. Hmm, 32, whoo, Samantha, you're like 30. 
There's no reason for them to be so low. Or, you know what? Let's be more positive here. Thank God you got them tested, and now it's time to work on them, right? I'm going to show you guys at some point. Um, I've had my hormones tested multiple times, and I'm going to show you how dramatically they've changed over the years, okay? Kimmy needs a chill-out supplement. Okay, Kimmy, relax. You're fine. We'll work on that. Don't we all, Crystal says. Chill out. I've heard that a lot from you. Yeah, okay. We got a lot of type A's on the line, and that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of in that boat too, but we can chill out. We know how to have fun. We've just got to start listening to our bodies, testing so we know where those things are at, and then making some changes. But again, what's going to be so amazing when I... um show you a comparison of my hormones from, I think the first time I tested maybe was in 2013. So from 2013 to now, man, is this the same woman? You wouldn't guess so. I have changed a lot and I've had to do different things, ups and downs for sure, um, all along the way. Um, Kimmy asked, do you need to fast first before blood or urine tests? Sometimes, not for your hormones, but for other tests. Yes, there's definitely tests that you do need to fast for. Glucose, um, which can also play a role in your cortisol, and um, a cholesterol, those types of things. Where do migraines fall into this mess? Great question, Bonnie. Well, it's totally a mess. Um, when I think about migraines, um, hey, Dixie, haven't seen you guys in a long time. How often should we test ourselves? Hmm. Well, Dixie, are you feeling a little cray cray? Um, or are you feeling pretty stable? Okay. So that's the first question, Dixie. Um, but you know, on a yearly basis or at least to recheck, um, our great ideas, um, it all depends. It really all depends. For people who are taking things for their hormones, you may want to check it earlier. For somebody like the example I gave today, who's not going to be taking anything after this, we're going to wait that out. Maybe we'll check in six months for her. Maybe we won't check for a year if she maintains and is really stable. But back to Bonnie, I didn't forget you. Um, migraines. Absolutely hormones can trigger migraines. First step is to figure out, are the hormones balanced or are they not? Are the hormones just really high? Maybe they're balanced, but they're super high and your body can't tolerate that. Um, think about, you know, I'll always go back to how the body works and think about um, even thermography that we've talked about and how it can show heat and vascularity and suggest estrogen dominance. Estrogen equals growth. Estrogen is going to produce um, more vascularity, okay? And so migraines can be triggered from those blood vessels being dilated or those blood vessels being restricted, okay? So really, Bonnie, to answer your question about migraines and hormones, if a woman is having migraines and we clean up her foods and we clean up her gut and she doesn't have an infection, we've got to look at hormones to say what's out of whack. And then it actually gets really nitpicky to say, um, you know, these are normal levels, but maybe they're too high for you because you're having migraines. Or in the Dutch test, the precision analytics, we can look at how well you methylate, like somebody brought up methylation and how well your body breaks down those hormones because they might be getting bottlenecked. And it's not actually the actual level. It's what happens next that could be triggering the migraine. And that gets missed when you just test it through the blood. And um, there's lots of times I only test hormones to get a baseline through the blood. But talking that through, migraines, we really want to know how that person detoxes how well they methylate because it's probably more of a bottleneck issue or an issue there that they're 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 making appropriate amounts but they're having a hard time clearing it and that contributes to the migraine. So that's where migraines fit in this overall mess. They're just a mess right along with it and um, it really depends on the person and the woman um, to figure out 
what she needs. I can't say it's because of high progesterone, high estrogen, or low progesterone, or low estrogen. Can't say that at all, because I have seen different hormones for different women with migraines. Um, okay. Um, okay. What else you guys got? Um, Kimmy, you asked about cortisol. No, you do not have to fast for that, if that was your question. Um, other thoughts or questions on your hormones tonight? I hope you liked the story. She's a really good example of um, the symptoms that some of you suffer with and believe that you just have to keep suffering with. You don't have to suffer. Does that mean everybody gets as fast, gets well, or where exactly they want to be as fast as this woman? No. Um, again, I'll give you myself as an example because my hormones have have changed. They were one way. I used to have to support myself one way. And now I have to support myself very differently because now I'm getting ready for menopause. In 2013, I wasn't ready for menopause. Now my body says, yeah, I don't think you're going to really ovulate too much anymore. And wow, have my hormones changed. That doesn't mean anything bad. It just means, okay, this is the time and I need to recognize that. Um, do you typically have great response for migraine relief when it comes to hormonal triggered migraines? So Crystal, super hard question for me to answer like that for you because um, I guess my question to you is why are you saying they're hormonal triggered? Because it might be food. It might be your belly. It might be stress. It might be your cortisol. Maybe it's all of those things that make you more sensitive to your hormones. So it is really messy. It's, you know, peeling back the layers or taking away the low hanging fruit of, you know, unless you've done all those things before, every person is different. Um, definitely, I've had a lot of people with headaches and migraines who they've resolved. And then when they start eating bad again, or if they feel like they're starting to get reactive to new foods, or their body changes, let's say premenopausal, now getting menopausal, it might trigger them again. But I do have um, one woman who's in my head specifically who we got her migraines to go away for about six months, and then they started to creep back in. What does that say to us, though? Her migraines were gone for six months. We did something right. She was following things well, and then they started creeping back in. And we got to figure out that why for her. Why are they back? Okay. Um, so, yes, but there are times where, you know, either people, you got to listen to your body. You got to um, follow, you know, a good food regimen because foods, 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 foods can help you balance your hormones, ladies. Definitely foods can do that and different supplements and different herbs and, you know, concentrating on things. They can help you get balanced with your hormones, but they can also contribute to something getting worse. Okay, so they're not all just balancers. They push one side or the other. Now, typically they won't push it to an excess because they're just nutritional um, or foods, but yet too much of something can throw you off balance and make it more sensitive. Um, Kimmy's eager to get her food allergy test back. Fantastic. Hi, Bev. If I eat flax soy and you, you wrote chai, Bev, but I think you mean chia. And thanks for bringing that up. You're, um, a great example. You've told me that before that there's some foods you know, which flax and soy specifically are phytoestrogens and they trigger migraines for Bev. So, Crystal, I don't know if you knew that already. Maybe you did, but that's um, a great example. Same time in the month that I get them, typically, I can expect to get one at the end of the month today. Bummer. Okay, so hormones are playing a role, but what I want to encourage you is, well, and you can always start with the hormones, but there's something throwing your hormones off, and we have to figure out those other triggers you got to look at your stress. You've got to look at your foods. You've got to look at your belly. Look at how well you're sleeping. Look at your cortisol. Those are all other things that can be making that time at your period worse. Whereas if we take care of those issues, you're, you're still going to get your period. Okay. We're not going to change 
that from happening. That's not the right solution. But if we get that inflammation and those stressors out of your body, then your body can handle getting a period and not give you a migraine. That's one case scenario of what can happen and has happened for many people. Chantelle went gluten and dairy free and my migraines disappeared. Perfect. Great job, Chantel. So that's an example of those foods were causing a lot of inflammation. They were an irritation and it helped to clear those migraines. Perfect. I do know that aged cheese and wine is also a trigger, so try my best to stay away. And when you say wine, wine is a vasodilator, okay? So uh, that woman that I was talking about where we had her migraines gone for six months, she was doing so fantastic, and then they started creeping in. They started creeping back in when it was hot. She was either on vacation or she started to overheat, she started to become very sensitive to the heat, that vasodilation, that being hot triggers her um, her migraines. Okay, so another example, but that's the same thing that wine will do to you. Um, okay, good to know. We'll definitely be in touch. I'm tired of masking symptoms instead of resolving and taking care of the problem. Absolutely. You got to dive in and figure out what's your problem, Crystal? What is your problem? Because maybe your problem is similar to Chantel's. Maybe it's gluten and dairy and that's going to help, but maybe it's a lot more or maybe it's cherries and apples or maybe it's you've got a gut infection and that's keeping you stressed, your body's stressed and thrown off, and then you're going to have a period on top of that too, and your body says, I can't take it anymore, and then you got a migraine. So there's lots and lots of different things that all go together that make you special, that make you unique, and make you suffer with those migraines, but that doesn't mean that we can't figure it out and start to peel away the layers to get those to improve. Okay. Um, all right, guys, nine o'clock. Um, we've been talking for 30 minutes. I've been talking a lot, but I really wanted to answer a lot of your questions this time. And so, um, I'm not sure what example I'm going to have for you next week, but I'm going to do it similar. I'm going to hopefully have a good story to share and I'm going to show you something wonky about, um, her hormones or maybe his hormones at some point. And to just demonstrate, we needed to test to figure out what was going on with her, to figure out what to do for her. And I loved this example today because oh, she thought she was taking a supplement that was so good for her because she was encouraged to take it. And this is just going to balance your hormones. No, 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 no. It was wrong. It, it was not the right thing. Her body didn't need it and she was just fighting it. So you got to be careful with some of those things, okay? Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Please share the video. I want to be able to reach new people who need to hear this this way of thinking as well. And I will be in touch with all of you real soon again. Have a great night. Sleep good.